of course, rule number one of making videos is, of course, if something goes wrong, Welcome back to the woodshed, folks. Today I'd like to show you how I attached this table apron to this breadboard end using a sliding dovetail, a tapered sliding dovetail. That way it holds in there without any glue, but it's a secure mechanical interface. Let's see how I did it. Of course, rule number one of making videos is if you put a camera on it, something's gonna go wrong. So I'm actually going to demonstrate on this practice table here. This is just a little leaf from the island in my kitchen. Not so much concerned about it as I am about this fine gaming table. And right off the bat here, I realize I'm a liar and this is gonna be a homologation of both projects. I want to attach the top with a sliding dovetail setup. So on this portion of the stretchers, or whatever they're called, I'm going to put a dovetail, a tapered dovetail on top. And the small end of my taper over here, so I'll actually start here and work my way back. On the back end, I'm going to have just enough, remove just enough material so that this plane and this very edge right here are coplanar. Up here, it's actually going to be considerably narrower. And we're going to achieve that by working in about eight inch difference between my strokes and 10 inches. It's not a real set in stone thing. Alright, now once I've made my way back to the end, I should already have established a taper and there is no depth stop on this plane. So now I just need to remove material until I've got the back end, the thick end, to that point where I've just eliminated any flat spot on the top edge of the dovetail. Okay. Now before I flip this over and work the other way, I'm going to write narrower with an arrow so I remember which end's skinny and which end's thick. Okay, working the other side, things are going to be a little bit different. My narrower end is now down here and this plane only works on one side. So this time I'm going to start at this end, which is the narrow end, but I'm going to make full passes until I've established the depth at the thick end. God, the thing cuts so nice. I tried putting this vertical in my vise. So I'd work either side, but it just, it was super awkward keeping the plane parallel. A lot easier for my brain to keep it plumb than it is to keep it parallel. If you'd like, you can even put a little pencil mark down here on the flat part. And as soon as the pencil disappears, you know that you've eliminated any flat. All right, now we need to make this end narrower. So what I'm going to do, start a pass, and then pull up towards the end. Make another pass, pull up about 
eight inches short of that. Just keep working my way back like that. Now that I've made my steps backwards, there's going to be little micro steps there that might hang up in the final assembly. But I've established a taper, and again, without the depth stop, I can just take a final cleaning pass and it will maintain that taper I've established. Okay, so it's the next morning, and there's an important step I forgot on this dovetail, and that is I'm going to want it to be centered. Equidistant on the other sides. Otherwise, it's going to be pretty difficult to uh, properly center it. So, of course, equal measurements means that I am centered now. Made a dovetail on this piece, the male part of a sliding tapered dovetail. And I've made a guide to make the female piece. this to guide my saw a female piece. First thing I gotta do is find the middle of this. Good first guess. Tabletop that's going to be. Alright, the setup for this is going to be complicated and very important. So first, I need to strike a line across here that is square. This is an old tabletop that's been painted like three different colors, but I want to redo it and do a break a takedown table. Uh, I particularly like it because it's made of two boards that are fi about 15 inches wide each. Don't get that too often anymore these days. Let's see. Is this inboard or outboard? This first line I'm laying out here is simply to center the board with the dovetail on it. Okay. Now that line is going to indicate the center of this piece. Mark the narrow end. So the idea is this will slide in this way and be centered on that line. Alright, this time I'm going to mark this outside edge, but this is not where our cut will be. This is just a reference mark for myself. This is actually how wide the slot will be at its bottom. Now we need to make a set of marks where a cut will begin at this spacing. So let's measure that. What we want to mark out here, after centering this, is the outside edge. So right now I've got this upside down because I don't want to go off my dovetail. Mm -hmm. 
Now, you'll want to measure what the offset is. I'm sure, I got narrow, narrow, yes. So I need to measure this offset. I was messing around with my depth gauge and my depth calipers and the combination square and I realized that's, that's too complicated and inaccurate because of the thickness of the rule. All we gotta do is take a small machine square Make sure this is centered, make sure that's my narrow end. Yep. Slide it right up to the edge here. I recommend a marking knife, but that doesn't show up on camera. Find that edge and mark it out on the table. Likewise here. We'll do that on the other end, and then line up our guide between those marks. And then that will be the angle that sets our saw plate. And as you can see, this angle matches this angle, and we'll take our saw And use this as our guide. I'm gonna grab some clamps and set this up. Well I'm glad I decided to waste time with this test run because I'm because I'm learning a lot. This just this piece of the combination square is the best tool for marking off of there because everything sits flush. Boom. Marking knife in there. One more item of note. I'll jab this in my mark here. Is I have left a curve. I'm left my guide a curve width off of my mark. You can't see that. This is the waist side towards the center. Well, here goes literally everything. I'm gonna make my first couple passes vertical Just because it's easier. <laughs> my brain is used to it. And as long as I'm less than the depth of the teeth, it'll be very easy to change that. saw to clear that much sawdust, but overall it's working very well. Well, let me stop and establish a mark for depth here. Use the poor men's die cam here. I just go willy-nilly, but I'm going to go slow and deliberate on this. When I go to cut this other side, I'm going to double check this cut 
because of the saw curve and if I have to offset anything I can do it then and still end up with a tight joint. Well I'm being rather foolish here. The reason that nose down there and not back here on the first cut is because the handle is hitting. So I modified the handle a little, went a little further and it's hitting again. I don't need my guide after I've established this. I don't know why I didn't wrap my head around that. So lose the guide. And we'll keep at it. Okay. Down depth on both sides. I'm going to mark my depth. Set it with my marking gauge here and mark it on both ends for the next step, which will be wasting all that out with a chisel. You know, I'll probably actually take my saw and make one ver vertical cut down the middle to help with the removal. It'll just loosen stuff up a little more. It's not going to want to come out very easily with that dovetail. Keep the strop nearby in order to continuously hone the edge on this. We'll see how this works. I'm only going partial depth here. Yeah, I can actually take out about a quarter inch at a time before it gets a little wonky. Let's see what happens if I try it this way. <laughs> I thought this was going to take a while. It'll probably take me forever on that ash table. But here, it's just flying out. Gotta make sure I stay away from that edge. If I get underneath there, it's gonna be a bad day. Underneath the dovetail. Alright, so I've used my router plane to clear out the bottom to depth. And now I can test fit this piece in here. And it starts catching about there. Which is good. Much better than being loose. So now I'm going to take my side rabbit plane. Say that three times fast. And just come in here and ever so slightly widen this groove. Make sure you stop before the end so you don't have tear out. So we'll do that a few times. And then check the fit again until we've got it right where we want it. I'm also thinking I'm going to break this corner uh, with my number four. Because anytime you have a sharp point like that, it's really going to want to bite in. So I'll just keep widening that ever so slightly, not checking for fit until we got where we want it. But it's definitely clamped in there good. I, I really like the mechanics of this joint. I'm almost there, but I need to resist the temptation of hammering at home because there's so much force in the mechanical interface of this joint something will break. So I'm going to keep going until it's 
an inch, three quarters of an inch away, maybe even about, then I'll give it one good tap to send it home. But yeah, don't force this. Something will break. Well, a series of taps, not one good hit. That'd be foolish. And there's the completed joint.